Hey guys, welcome to another video on market tricks and gotchas and things that tend to mess up my students when they're reading multiple choice questions. I'm not going to get into a lot of the intuition in our model here about like what shifts the curves, what ways. This is more just about the graphs and the anatomy of this model, like the way we use it. If you want all the intuition and stuff, go see my other supply and demand videos in the principles playlist, which will be available at the end of this video. Let's start talking first about demand curves and what it means to shift a demand curve. Demand can increase by shifting to the right. That's my first one that I always emphasize. Make the increases be to the right and the decreases be to the left. The reason we emphasize this is because that will push you to higher quantities at every price for the increase or lower quantities at every price for the decrease. What do I mean by that? I can pick some given price level and at that price level, the lowest curve has the lowest quantity, the next curve has the higher quantity, and the next curve has the highest quantity. The shift in demand meant that at the same price, my quantities increased for an increase or decreased for a decrease. And that's what's going on when we talk about shifting left or right. I do not want you to think about this in terms of up or down because that'll mess you up when you get to supply. Left or right is good for both. All right, there are lots of things that can shift a demand curve. Uh, we can mess with people's income, the price of related goods, their tastes, population and demographics, expected future prices. The one thing that does not change a demand curve is the price. Remember, a demand curve, the one thing it's good for is linking quantity and price. You plug in a price, you get a queue. It's the only thing it does. It says that our customers today have this behavior system where if you plug in a certain price, they will want to buy a certain quantity. As long as all other things remain equal, that demand curve will stay constant no matter what the price. But if you change one of those other things I listed a minute ago, then you've broken the all other things equal assumption and you need a new demand curve because it changes what quantity we want to buy at every price. So, Sometimes you'll see stuff like this in your class to help you figure out or to test and see if you understand the difference between a change in demand and a change in quantity demanded. I've got these three points. I'm going to highlight the prices and quantities for them. There's a high price. There's a low price. There's the three quantities. Uh, something we could get into is like moving from point A to point B. Maybe the price drops from high price to low price, pH to PL. What do we call it? That would be an increase in the quantity demanded or vice versa going from B to A as price level shifts from PL to PH. That would be a decrease in the quantity demanded. QA increasing to QB, QB decreasing to QA. We call this a change in the quantity demanded because the demand curve didn't move. The only thing that moved was the price itself. Price moves, you move along the demand curve. Price moves, you change the quantity demanded. Price moves, you better be thinking about that word quantity. Now, something besides the price in this market could change. Something could move us from point A to point C, in which case we call that an increase in demand. And then C, back to either of those points, is a decrease in demand. All right, let's go on to supply then. Don't forget the things that can change a supply curve are input prices, technology changes, the price of related goods, the number of firms, expected future prices. I got a whole video on all that also. Supply, same idea. Increases to the right, decreases to the left. Same idea with the given price thing. At a given price, the low supply has the lowest quantity. And the higher the, the more supply increases, the higher the quantity at that same price. High supply shifting to the right means that sellers collectively are willing to sell more at the same price. So we shift it to the right. This is the one where you really don't want to get confused about up versus down. 
because if you drew a supply curve that was started this black one, if you drew one that was up and called that an increase, you'd be wrong because it'd be lower quantities at every price. And that would be bad. And we can bring back another graph like this. And I can tell you that if you, if the price level increases from P low to P high, then the quantity supplied will increase from QA to QB. If you decrease the price, then the quantity supplied will decrease from QB to QA. Those points help you link the quantities and prices. But if you're just changing price, you stay on the same curve. It's that ceteris paribus thing again. Or if we increase supply by moving from points A or B to point C, then we're on an entirely new supply curve. And that can only happen if we change one of those other things. You change price, you change the quantity along the same curve. You change one of those other things, then you change the whole curve. All right, then we got this equilibrium. I've got videos on this explaining why it's efficient, explaining how shortages and surpluses lead to equilibrium. I'm not going to duplicate them here, even though my art works better here. But let's look at what an increase in demand looks like. If you increase demand from this, from this initial point to this new one, the equilibrium shifts from A to B. So when demand increases, you expect the quantity to rise from QA to QB. You expect the price to rise from PA to PB. And that's pretty obvious looking at the graph. One thing I want to point out that my students often forget is that before we have that shift from A to B, P, the price might not change immediately. If demand increases, and price lags behind it all, then there will be a shortage. At the low price, the new quantity demanded is QC, which means the shortage is the gap between QC and QA. That shortage will trigger a price increase, and the price will increase from PA to PB. And that's how markets equilibrate or reach equilibrium. A whole lot of other stuff on the different causes of the demand and supply shifts, the way they interact, what happens when two curves move. Uh, go ahead and check some of those out. Uh, in the meantime, I hope this really brief overview with just some of the tricks and little wordy things is helpful. If not, sorry to waste your time. Too bad. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy econing.